Have you ever wondered why Henny Penny thought the sky was falling, why that acorn hit her head? Well, if you've ever wondered that, this is the book for you because this might explain it. And so Good Question is a story about a fox up in a tree and uh, he is telling the story about why he's up in the tree. And he, uh, he's up in the tree because of all these different misadventures he has through, um, through fairy tale land. He really just wants a meal. He's just a hungry fox who wants a meal, but he keeps on ending up in all the wrong stories until finally he ends up in a tree hiding from a giant. I used, as a primary school teacher, I used fairy tales a lot to teach reading and to teach writing because they're exciting and they're you know, perilous and kids really enjoy them, they're very engaging, but they also have very strong structural bones and lots of repetition. So I used Henny Penny in particular, I always like that one because that really engages the kids, there's lots of repetition and the kids get involved um, in, the, in the telling and, and the reading and, and they love to act, act it out and so forth. But my personal favourite is one that I don't think I've ever shared with with kids actually, and that is um, Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Match Girl. If you think about when I started to really think about the story, there's not many foxes in fairy tales. There's only, I always thought there was, I always wanted to have a fox story, but there aren't many. There's wolves and other animals, but there's, and pigs and so forth, but the fox doesn't really feature in that many fairy tales. So I, it was all down to, I had to choose the fairy tales that I thought a fox would go, um, that, that isn't normally in there, and, and wanted to eat. It was all about him being hungry. So it was choosing the fairy tales that there was um, some chance of him getting a meal, like the feast at the banquet or the porridge from the bears or the pig that the wolf wants and so forth. So that, that was the, that's why, how they were chosen, so that it was all about him, him just getting a meal. I've always been um, quite um, convinced it was a good idea, but I just had to find the right way to tell it. So I tried writing it in rhyme, I tried tr telling it in a very direct way, I tried telling it very lyrically and, and, um, and in a traditional tale kind of way, all these different ways, and they all failed, they flopped. I had just about given up, and one morning, quite early, I must have been thinking about it without realising, and I, um, this voice, the fox voice, came into my head and started to tell the story. Now by this time, um, I knew the story so well because I'd written it 25 different ways, so the plot and all the different things that happened were very solid, so now I just had this really sassy, smart-alecky fox telling me the story. She's just done an amazing job in it. It wasn't easy, it certainly wasn't easy, she had to work really hard. But I, like you look at that fox, you just want to touch its fur and um, that character's amazing. Um, the character that really stands out for me that I think she's done a particularly surprising and um, amazing job is the fairy godmother. And I didn't realise it, but my words actually made it very difficult for her. So in the story, the fairy godmother I describe as having spiderweb hair and a whiskery chin, just trying to, you know, change things up a little bit so we didn't have the, the um, typical kind of stereotypical fairy godmother and um, that made it really difficult for Annie so she had to try lots of different uh, and I didn't even realize that when I wrote those words I just like the sound of them really and um, she had to try lots and lots of different ways to get that fairy godmother with the spiderweb hair and the whiskery chin and I think she's the funniest um, gorgeous fairy godmother in the on the planet in any book. <laughs>